I decided to make this video with some old pictures that I have. These pictures are all about 20 years and older. Because of the fact that I constantly hear people compare the Italian Cane Corso to the boxer and stating that they're related. Now I know a lot of the newer stuff does have boxer in it, but the old stuff, the good stuff did not. And the stuff still exists. This was a dog that was born 20 years ago and he absolutely had no boxer. This was him at about six, seven years old. And when he was a young dog, many people in North America were yelling that he was a boxer cross because his type was considered to be extreme. Now his type is not extreme compared to the type of dogs that people are producing. This dog would catch hogs, did protection work, did schutzend, worked with autistic kids, did anything and everything that you asked of him. He was a tough dog that required very little training. It was just who he was and his offspring were the same. His sister was one of, actually was the very first dog in the US to get titled in hog catching. And that was back when it was still a sport in the South that people who were breeding dogs could attend. Does that really look like a boxer head? That's him with my daughter. She's now turning 22. Now this line, in my opinion, was a very, very pure line. And then shortly after they started bringing them into the state, they completely changed. They went from these big, huge, strong dogs with a heavy coat that were good and aggressive, but not stupidly aggressive, to these dogs with little teeny tiny legs, skinny boned, boxery faces, deep narrow chest, and short coats, like fine short coats like a boxer. Now this dog weighed 126 pounds max in show condition, and he would spend all day hanging from a tire. Him doing shuts and training when he was young. As a puppy, looks nothing like a boxer, but unfortunately, because of some Italian breeders, that did start mixing boxer in just when they got popular in the States, the breed went to shit. They were hanging papers, nobody knew what was true. Like, does that really look boxer? That's him at six or eight years old. You have to remember, this is a dog that was born in 2001, March. That's him at nine months old when a strange dog came onto her farm and came near the barn and he was completely ready to defend with no training, no nothing. That's his sister. No, if anything, <clears throat> excuse me, she looks more Neapolitan Mastiff for how they looked back then. She, in her time, which was 2002, 2003, was the most titled female in the history of the breed. 
but I'll be honest, she wasn't very bright. Beautiful dog. She was actually his half-sister. This was a female, massive female. She weighed actually 164 pounds. And she was out of a very, very famous Italian import. That's her again. Not the nicest looking dog, but she did produce beautiful puppies. That's one of her puppies. Very young. That's one of her puppies with the previous male. Does that look boxer? No. Because it was just after this time that I had these dogs that all of a sudden there was a flood of Italian imports that had no bone. There were these little, tiny, ugly, scrawny dogs with what I called stupid faces. And it was right after Chino won the world championship. Now, most of these dogs in these photos are all very young dogs under two. That is a 14 month old male. Does that look like it has boxer? No. The problem is, is people were so excited to get certain bloodlines out of Italy that they were just grabbing up anything as long as the pedigree said it had certain dogs in it, which it absolutely didn't. The pedigrees were fake. If you were talking with breeders back then in Italy, they would tell you Whatever pedigree you wanted on your dog, they'd put on your dog. So you could pick a puppy out of a litter that you liked, and they'd tell you, whatever pedigree you want, we'll put that to the dog. Does that look boxer? Nope. This dog worked on a farm until he was very, very old. Big dog also. Just like his mom. He was in to the 160 pound mark. Massive dog. And this dog, if you look at the hair, they used to say that the Corso had the hair of the cow. And you can find that in old articles because they're not supposed to be the short, stiff haired breed like the Neapolitan Mastiff and the Boxer, and they're not supposed to have the same coat as a Rottweiler. There's a difference in the coat type. Now, a lot of people think because you look at the shorter head style, shorter muzzle, more boxy, they assume that means Boxer, but it doesn't. A lot of these original dogs, back when the breed first started coming across, to the North America, a lot of the puppies had kinks in their tails. If they had anything in them, I always said, even way back then, 20 years ago, they had some sort of bulldog, probably something that came from Spain because there was kinks in the tail and the dogs had the tenacity of a bulldog. They would hang on things tires, spring poles, you name it, they would hang on it. Not just that, they naturally would go catch a hog. It wasn't something you had to train them for. They were just tough, tough farm dogs. And they weren't overly aggressive towards people. Now, look at this dog. Does that look like it has boxer in it? And if you want to, and the reason his eyes are white is because he was actually maced during a home invasion. And that's the truth. And this dog was one of the most feared dogs on the west coast of Canada. Now this dog is boxer type. He was imported to Canada 
for the fact that his structure was unbelievable and something incredibly desired in the breed as the breed had horrible structure. Now he's only young here, maybe 10 months, but this dog now can be found in tons of pedigrees all around the world as he went back to Europe, back to Italy to be shown and to be bred. And he produced big dogs. He was a big dog, probably 29, maybe 30 inches tall, about 130, 35 pounds. He won every show he ever attended because his movement and his structure was perfect. Not perfect for the breed, but perfect for the show ring. And his genetics are in a good majority of pedigrees today. I never really liked him. I love the fact that he had a beautiful structure and he passed it on very dominantly in his offspring. However, he always produced personalities that were like boxers. They were bubbly, goofy, not serious ever. And he also produced really bad undershot dogs. In Italy, he produced dogs that were the color of a dog de Bordeaux. They were red with the liver mask. That's him again, but that's a very young photo. Doesn't do the dog justice. He was definitely an incredibly beautiful dog. Tons and tons of the top producing dogs today have this dog in their pedigree. This is boxer type, which came down from him. And I'll show you some more. That is his daughter. You can see how the whole head type completely changed. You got the really steep line here and almost the flat top skull. Very boxery, the big fat round dish of a tongue at the end. It's another one of his daughters. A granddaughter. Now she's a beautiful pup, but to me she's not the right type. Boxer type. Another daughter. Boxer type. Totally boxer personality. And judges loved this dog as a puppy. That's her again. To me, that's not the right type. No, that's her half-sister behind her. Totally different type. Boxer type. This is one of his sons, which was this like English Mastiff type. This dog was humongous. This is like an eight month old puppy. And look at the size of the head. That's him when he was about four months. No consistency. That's a granddaughter. No, she was a beautiful dog. She actually won under an Italian judge, a very well-known one, Vandoni, and she was about four months old. And he said that she was the nicest puppy of the breed he'd ever seen. Big, big puppy too. And he said if the rules were that you could select a dog under one year to win breed, he would have put her up for breed instead of just best puppy and specialty. She was dumb as could be. Beautiful dog, but not very smart. So we go back to this type and then over a short period of time with just adding one other line, the type completely changed 
as did the temperament. You went from dogs that would work. There were very, very strong dogs, but totally stable, totally trustable. Like I said, this dog, in my opinion, is the best dog I've ever known. And I've had thousands of dogs. Very serious about his protection work, very serious about hunting. Had a big scar on his face from the tusk of a hog, a big hog going right through his face. Didn't care. Worked with autistic children. Loved the elderly, like just as stable as stable could be. And his sister who was a bit of a, an airhead. And at one time she was the most titled female in the history. That was like 2003, 2004. Multi best in show, multi best in specialty, multi champion. She was an absolutely gorgeous dog. Super temperament. She hung out with the kids all the time. Totally trustable. But I couldn't get her to work. And then that dog, she was an ultimate farm dog. She herded naturally. We had goats and she would herd all the goats into the barn. Not a very good looking dog. Yet her father was a very well-known dog, supposedly a junior world champion. I think the second year that the breed went to the world show, but I'm not so sure if that's a legitimate thing as there was a lot of lying back then about how things were. And this is a dog that on paperwork, her papers are hung. Who it says her father is on the paperwork is at, her father actually has two sets of pedigrees. Was her father, but the guy who bred her didn't actually have the rights to use the stud because he was showing the dog as a professional handler. And look at the bone on that dog. That's how the dogs were looking like at one time coming out of Italy. And then everything changed after Chino. And people just wanted pedigrees. They didn't care anymore. And they went after certain bloodlines. And those people were mixing Boxer in. Because the dogs went from that to being these little fine-legged dogs, smooth, smooth coats, undershot jaws at that age. At that age, you could see the chin sticking out, expression completely changed, and the temperament changed. So there still are true Corsos out there coming out of Italy. You just have to really do your research to figure it out.